Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here on this Friday. We've got a lot to talk about in this update. A lot of interesting little things. And we're going to start up here in interior BC. This is Revelstoke, and obviously we've got snow coming down up there. Um, I'd say the primary snow level is going to run about 5,000 feet. Now, at times it may dip below that, but I think kind of above 5,000 is where we're going to see the best shots of snow. A little bit of snow today, much better shot. I'd say the bulk of the precipitation might come in tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow night, and into Sunday. So I'll show you the timeline for that coming up. That's interior BC at Revelstoke. Let me take you down to the lower 48. This is Alta. I mean, these cameras are awesome. Look at the stars out. Um, you've got all the snow there looking at Mount Baldy. So some of the reports I, I saw from this last snow, uh, anywhere from 8 to 12 inches of snow up there in Little and Big Cottonwood Canyon at the highest of elevations. Um, and this actually turned into a pretty low elevation snow too, but um, now we're in for a little bit of a quieter stretch, at least in the immediate future. There's a chance of snow on the 20th, but really looking down the road, I think the better chances, more um, organized storm systems come in probably on or after the 25th or the 26th. So it's a little bit of a waiting game now. Here's the, uh, the radar across the west. Uh, not a lot going on. There's your precipitation up there in the Pacific Northwest and interior BC. Again, not a ton of precip up there right now, but it will pick up on Saturday into Sunday up there. And for now, there's not a lot of precip down here uh, across uh, uh, the lower 48. There are a couple of cold fronts in the forecast. In fact, um, here are my bullet points. Now, these cold fronts are fast, windy fronts, so they're, they don't have a ton of precip with them. They'll have more wind, I think, than anything else. And for example, um, so there are two fronts, 1017, 1018, and then another one, 1019 and 1020. I foresee an extended period of high winds across the front range high peaks of Colorado, really going to pinch the pressure gradient, 90 mile an hour gusts for three days straight. Not, un, not uncommon. I think we're probably going to see that. Uh, will not be unusual for Long's Peak. Grand Teton on 1019, that's probably when your winds will maximize 80 to 90 mile an hour gusts as um, that front comes through on that particular day. Then, this is one of the interesting things about this forecast. Looking down the road, we're actually watching for an atmospheric river setup on or after the 25th. And so if that happens, then we're going to get overrun. Pieces of that moisture in those storm systems will overrun Utah, Idaho, Wyoming, Montana, and Colorado with higher chances of snow, potentially. So I'm watching that very carefully. And you can see the best odds of snow right here for Colorado, Utah, Wyoming, Montana, and Interior BC. In fact, there's Interior BC. You can see it the chances stretch all the way out through the 21st above 5,000 feet. But notice one cold front, two cold fronts, and then a bigger storm complex or cycle potentially, and it may last beyond the 27th. It's entirely possible that that cycle across the West, and I'll show you some of the graphics for this, last into Halloween. Um, so we could be in for a pretty stormy stretch across parts of the West. Here is water vapor satellite imagery. So on this, your oranges, reds, even the black colors are drier air in the mid-levels of the atmosphere. The moisture's in the whites and the blues. That's where the action is. So here's what's going on. You can see the flow right here. Running up into the uh, interior BC, BC, coastal range, Pacific Northwest. And what's going to happen is this will send these two windy cold fronts down on a northwest flow um, over the next five days. So you can almost see that happening with this northwest flow that's setting up here across a lot of the Intermountain West. So that's how it's going to shake out. Let's talk about the forecast radar here. So this is what the radar should look like in the future. We'll start this up at lunchtime today on Friday, October 17th. There's your first cold front. Um, already getting sent out of the Pacific Northwest. That will dive down through a lot of Montana, Idaho, Wyoming, and then brush and kind of roll through the Front Range High Peaks of Colorado. So that's generally how that will play out. Here we go. There's dinner time today. There's the early morning hours of Saturday. Now it's moving so fast. There's your front. What it's going to do is really kick up the winds. It's going to quickly 
pinch the pressure gradient and force the wind to blow. And then you've already got the second front taking shape up there in the Pacific Northwest. There it comes. So there's the, the dinner hour on Saturday. There are the early morning hours. Now, the second one appears to have a little more juice to it. This is early on Sunday. You can see the front right here. Again, the same sort of track on this west-northwest flow will take it down into the inner mountain. Um, all right, here we go. There's lunchtime on Sunday, and it kind of dries up a little bit. There's the dinner hour on Sunday. Let me take into the early morning hours of Monday. So there's Monday in the morning. There's your front right there. So it races in just like the first one. This one starts with a little more moisture, but then it kind of dries up. But again, that's really going to kick up the wind as that one comes through. So two very windy fronts. And yes, there's going to be snow accumulation up into the northern tier right there. Okay, so that's the forecast radar. Let's talk a little bit about the way the atmosphere is going to behave. So this is uh, this is effective today, 1017. So there's our next, there's our first cold front. That's number one. That's taking shape. You can already see the pressure drop. And again, that'll take it right down through the inner mountain. So that's today. Let me take you into the future. This is Monday, 1020. You can see the second cold front right here with that uh, those pressure drops. And what you're looking at here on these maps, uh, up at about 18,000 feet, middle of the atmosphere, are atmospheric pressure anomalies, so either highs or lows. Um, lower than that, these pressures should be over the 20-year average. And it's easy to spot these features on this. That's why I like these maps. That's the second cold front. Now look at this. Guys, this is the 27th, so looking way down the road. But this is critical because if this verifies, I mean, look at the size of this pressure drop. I mean, the axis of this thing extends all the way up into British Columbia, all the way down into New Mexico and Arizona. Um, if this verifies, we're talking about more widespread precipitation. And again, this is really the signature of really that atmospheric river setup or watch that we're kind of, we have on the board here. So again, that's way down the road. Now, how does that actually correspond to the jet stream? Because here's the critical part of all this. This is impressive. So this is up at about 30,000 feet. These are the winds. Where you see these brighter colors, those represent higher jet stream level winds. I mean, you're looking at over here on the scale potentially 150 mile an hour winds or stronger up there. So what you're doing is creating a conveyor belt, an escort, and you're bringing in a lot of moisture straight off the Pacific. That's what this is. The door is wide open. So you're slamming in precip and high winds against the mountain ranges of the Pacific coast at this point. And you're, you're basically carrying that in and overrunning it into the interior Rockies. So this is a great setup. That's the bottom line. If this actually happens, we're talking about uh, atmospheric river type setup. So we're on river watch. That's 1026. So that's way down the road. Now here is the uh, IVT or integrated vapor transport forecast. And this is just looking at where, where is the, the bulk of the atmospheric moisture going to be running. And you can see it right here on the timeline. So there's the 26th, there's the 27th, 25th, 26th, 27th. And this is, it's way down the road, but you can see the increase in the AR category here during that period. This is potentially a moderate level, moderate intensity atmospheric river surge uh, between 25, 26, 27, and it probably extends all the way out towards Halloween at that point. So that's our confirmation um, at that point. Um, now, before that happens, let's go back and take a quick look at the five-day snow forecast. So this is just for five days. Doesn't go out and, and it does not account for that atmospheric river setup. So over the next five days, you can see the pattern. It's a, it's a northwest flow. It's very obvious. So that's where all of the precip is going to be running. You've got it in Montana. You've got it in Wyoming. You've got it in Idaho. You've got a teeny tiny bit in, in Utah, almost ne negligible. You've got some in Colorado. But the bulk of it is up here in B.C., Alberta, Glacier, um, that's where the that, that's where the moist flow is going to be, the best part of it. Let me take you in just a little bit closer. Zoom it in. Five day snow forecast: Wyoming, parts of Montana. Again, just a little itty bit there in Utah. Looking at potentially up to three or four inches over the mountains of Colorado. Now the magenta, the purples and the pinks, that's over six inches. So you can see that's the case up there into the um, parts of the Bighorns and parts of Yellowstone up here into parts of Southwest Montana. Not a lot for Idaho. 
Um, that's a five-day snow forecast. Let me zoom into Montana. So five-day snow forecast up here in Glacier, looking at 6 to 12 inches. Up to 6, where you see all these little purple shades. Um, and, and look at the numbers up here in the parts of B.C., Alberta. Some pretty hefty snow up there at the higher elevations. Let's look at Colorado, and then we'll really drill down here. But Colorado, potentially I-70 North, three or four. Well, you should actually call it one to four inches up here. Maybe a little bit more over the higher peaks of the southern mountains, assuming the pattern plays out as forecast. So there's not a ton there uh, in Colorado. Um, let me take you back. This is a time height forecast. Berthoud Pass. The next three days, there's your starting point. You move in this direction into the future. What I see here is a ton of dry air. That's what you see here with all the oranges and the yellows. That's dry air. Very little moisture, very little green. Also, key is wind. Look at the pressure. Look at this ridge, this pressure ridge that develops there. And that's on Saturday. That's probably the peak of the winds, although there looks like there might be another little surge coming in on Monday of high winds. You can see that by the wind barbs. They're blowing 50, 60, 70, 80 mile an hour up over Berthoud Pass. You can see they're flagged. You see some of those triangles there. Um, some, some very high winds. So dry and windy with these fronts that are coming through, both of these fronts. Um, let me show you a couple of plumes. Um, uh, where's the first one? There it is. So this is Jackson, Wyoming. Still keeping track of Jackson because we've talked about Jackson for the last three or four days. Your snow forecast. This takes us all the way out to the 1st of November. So very little snow until we get to about the 25th and 26th, and then a very sharp acceleration up of snow for Jackson, Wyoming. This is down in town. This is not up, you know, high on the ski area. And look at the air bars running 12 to 20 inches up there, potentially. But the, the ensemble means about 10 inches by the end of this. So that represents that pattern shift coming in with the atmospheric river. If the river happens, if the river watch verifies, then we get all of that moisture that gets sent into the interior. It affects places like Jackson. Um, so the other plume I wanted to show you, just for fun, this is Denver, Colorado. Um, obviously no snow through the 28th. However, then as we get close to Halloween, which is so often the case around in the Denver area, in the Mile High City, you can see just a little bit of snow indicated here, maybe up to an inch, inch and a half on the ensemble mean. Some of the air bars are up here around six inches. That's the extreme case, of course, but... That definitely shows you that once we get closer to Halloween, on or after the 25th, things may start to shift across the West, and the pattern could be much more active. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this update. Um, I'm probably going to do another presentation or another update here um, a little bit later today uh, because uh, it looked like the Climate Prediction Center came out with some some interesting uh, indicators for this this upcoming winter. I'll take a look at those, some of the graphics, and compare them to what I was thinking and what I was forecasting, what I am forecasting for this winter. So maybe I'll do that a little bit later today with a separate recording. But I appreciate you tuning in here, and as always, take care and have a great day.